day, feast of Saint Simon and Judas, apostles. Let's pray with a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when they came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became traitor. He came down with them and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Today the whole church celebrates the feast of two apostles, Simon, called the Zealot, and Judah, son of James, whom you heard about in today's reading of the Gospel. We know that Jesus chose his apostles, clearly calling on those whom he chose to succeed him in his ministry and in his healing and teaching service. Such ministry has been transmitted in the Church throughout the years by means of the priesthood, the episcopate, and the diaconate. However, we can also assume that his calling is addressed to any Christian, and that each of us in some way and in a broad sense is an apostle. All of us are messengers that Jesus sends out to transmit what he has given us. I would like you to consider two important questions that may help you understand this great mystery. The first question is, what did Jesus do before he chose the apostles? The Gospel says that he withdrew to a mountain to pray and spend the whole night in prayer to God. This withdrawal means that before Jesus decided to choose his apostles, he didn't just think about his decision, he prayed. Jesus spent time with his Father and talked with him about the Father's children, about Jesus' brothers and sisters. Jesus is the Son of God, so what would he talk about with his Father if not about us, who are also his children? What did he talk about that night if it was not about the twelve. We might think and dream that he also thought about each of us that night. When Jesus retired to speak to his father, as well as speaking to him as his son, surely he spoke to him about his siblings, each of us. Isn't it wonderful to think this, that Jesus didn't just go climb a mountain to indulge in calculations and reasoning as to who would be the best person or who to choose, but rather that Jesus went to talk to his father to open up his heart and so that God would tell him who to choose? This is what we, too, need to do when faced with important decisions. We need to spend a lot of time in prayer. We can't just make decisions based on our thoughts. Our decisions should be based on what God transmits to us and in the way He enlightens us when we pray. 
The second question we can ask ourselves is what did Jesus take into account that night when he chose the twelve? What were his requirements? Did he require a resume or curriculum to learn about the disciples' abilities? Did he ask for a good behavior certificate? No, he did none of that. Jesus didn't require certificates or resumes. Jesus didn't consider human capabilities and whether or not the apostles were sinners. He made his selections out of love. He didn't choose the twelve because they were good people. He chose them to turn them into good people. Jesus wished that by being with him the apostles would be transformed and would become his true disciples. He does the same thing with us. Jesus didn't choose you and me because we are particularly good people. He didn't choose me because of my outstanding capabilities. Jesus didn't consider any of those factors that night. He chose us out of pure love. And this is the mystery to which we have to open up. Let's think about this. Jesus chose you out of love. He didn't choose you because of what you did or what you didn't do. The truth is that by choosing us, Jesus invites us to develop our capabilities and to live in a different way. He invites us to be good and holy. But we become good and holy in the measure that we spend time with Him. We become able to discover our capabilities and talents to the extent that we say yes. And in order to say yes, it isn't necessary to wait and think and evaluate everything we are and have. I can assure you that when you say yes to God, when you decide to follow Him, you will begin to discover things that you would never have imagined. That is what the apostles discovered. The first one on the list is Peter. He was the weakest and the one who denied Jesus three times. The last is Judas Iscariot. He was a traitor. The things that God can do by calling us are truly incredible. Well, I hope we can all discover God's calling inside of us. It doesn't matter where you are what he expects of you or where he asks you to go to bring him and his word. The important thing is that you can perceive she's calling you and that you feel loved and driven to lead a different life. May we have a good day and may the blessing of our merciful God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon our hearts and remain with us forever.